Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Let's continue our lesson in lecture 5 of 9. Example 2. Given that fx is equals to x minus 1 square minus 3 for x greater than equals to 1. For part A, we want to determine whether fx is 1 to 1 function. So we will use horizontal line test. We have to sketch the graph. For this question, the function f is a quadratic function. So we need to decide whether it has minimum or maximum point. So we can refer to the coefficient of x square. So the coefficient of x square is positive. So positive it means it has a minimum point. What is the minimum point for this function? We can get it directly because it gives us standard form. So your minimum point is 1, negative 3. To sketch the graph, don't forget to find intercept. For this graph, it only have y intercept because x is greater than or equals to 1. So when y equals to 0, x is equals to 2.732. Plot all the points, the minimum point and the intercept and sketch the graph from x equals to 1. We use closed circle because x is greater than and equals to 1. Let's proceed to horizontal line. We can conclude that the function is 1 to 1 function because the line cuts only at 1 point. Next part, for B, we want to find F inverse. Use F composite F inverse equals to X. Substitute F inverse into F, so you will get F inverse X minus 1 square minus 3 is equals to X. Now we want to simplify so that F inverse will be the subject matter. F inverse X minus 1 square is equals to X plus 3. F inverse X minus 1 equals to plus minus X plus 3. And F inverse equals to 1 plus minus X plus 3. For this inverse function, it's already given that x is always greater than and equals to 1. So, f inverse x is only for 1 plus x plus 3. We didn't take the value of negative z. Now, we continue on part c. Sketch the graph of fx and f inverse x in the same axis and state the domain arrange for fx and f inverse x. For the graph of fx, we already sketch it in part A. So this is the graph. Minimum point is 1, negative 3 and the x intercept is 2.732. Now we want to proceed with f inverse x. Okay, the graph. So we need to draw straight line of y equals to x. Now we want to reflect the point. So from fx, this is the x-intercept, x equals to 2.732, and the minimum point is 1, negative 3. When we reflect, the value of x will be equals to y equals to 2.732 and the point 1 negative 3 will be negative 3 1 it means that all the value of x will be y and the point is also reflect from 1 negative 3 to negative 3 1 draw the the graph this is our f inverse x graph Next, we want to find the domain and range. For domain, f is equal to range f inverse. 
we can take it from the question because it is already given us for x greater than equals to 1. So it is 1 to infinity with close bracket. Then for the range of f and domain of f inverse, we can refer to one of the graph. Let's say I want to refer to graph of fx to find the range we refer to value of y. So the value of y is start from negative 3 to infinity. So that is the range of f and domain for f inverse, negative 3 to infinity with close bracket. Given that fx equals to 2 plus x minus 4 for x greater than equals to 4. A, we want to find an expression for f inverse x. As usual, use f composite f inverse equals to x. Substitute f inverse into fx. So 2 plus f inverse minus 4 is equals to x. Simplify the equation. We can take 2 to the right. So it will be x minus 2. Squaring both sides. After squaring, we get f inverse x minus 4 equals to x minus 2 square. Function f inverse will be equals to x minus 2 square plus 4. For fx, the domain is x greater than equals to 4. And for f inverse, the value of x or domain will be x greater than equals to 2. For part B, we want to sketch the graph of fx and f inverse x in the same axis. Refer to function f. fx is equals to 2 plus third x minus 4. For x greater than equals to 4. You can recall back how we want to sketch third function from previous lecture. So when x greater than equals to 4, that is the domain. You can write domain of f is equals to 4 to infinity. Then we have to find starting point. We substitute x equals to 4 into function f. So we we'll get y equals to 2 plus 3, 4 minus 4. Your y will be equals to 2. Starting point is at 4, 2. Now we proceed to sketch the graph. This is the starting point for 2. And the graph is increasing. We draw this line to reflect for f inverse x. Now the point is for 2. It means for the f inverse x, it will be 0.24. Sketch the graph, so this is your f inverse x. And C, state the domain and range for fx and f inverse. We can take directly domain for fx from the question. So domain f equals to range of f inverse equals to 4 to infinity with close bracket. And for range of f, actually is equals to domain of f inverse. This one also we already find it from part A. X greater than equals to 2. So the answer is from 2 to infinity with close bracket at 2. Example 4, a function f is given by fx equals to x squared minus 4x plus 1. 
if the domain of f is set of all real numbers, show that the function f has no inverse. We state the domain so that fx is one to one function. To determine whether fx has inverse or not, we will use horizontal line test. So we start with sketching the graph. To sketch the graph of fx, we have to find the minimum or maximum point because this graph is a quadratic function. For this graph, it has minimum point because the coefficient of x squared is positive. Okay, it has minimum point because a is greater than 0. Find the point by using the formula given in lecture 1. Therefore, x equals to negative, negative 4 over 2a. It will get equals to 2. Substitute the value of y. So y will be equals to negative 3. This is the minimum point of the graph. Don't forget to find x and y intercept. When x equals to 0, y is equals to 1. Then when y equals to 0, x will be equals to 0 0.268 and x equals to 3.732. Okay, we have two values of x. Now we want to sketch the graph with minimum point to negative 3 and the x and y intercept. Draw the graph, then draw the horizontal line. From here, we can see that okay, it intercept at two points. So the function is not one-to-one -one function. It is shown that the function has no inverse. To change fx to 1 to 1 function, we can restate the domain. We can use either the right side or the left side of the minimum point. For the right side, the domain will be 2 to infinity. While for the left side, the domain will be negative infinity to 2. We can choose either one so that the function has inverse. Example 5, given that fx equals to 2 plus modulus x minus 3. Part A, we want to determine whether fx is 1 to 1 function. We will use horizontal line test, so we have to start with sketching the graph. To sketch the graph of fx, for this question is absolute value function. So to sketch the graph, we need to find the vertex point. Take the element inside the modulus x minus 3 equals to 0. We will get x equals to 3. Then substitute to find the y. y will be equals to 2 plus modulus 3 minus 3. y equals to 2. Our vertex point for this function is 3, 2. Find the y-intercept. When x equals to 0, y equals to 5. Okay, this is the y-intercept. Plot all the points. So, vertex point is 3, 2. The graph is in the form of V-shape. Okay, don't forget the y-intercept at 5. So, this is the graph. Now, we can draw the horizontal line. So, we can see that the horizontal line cut the graph at 2 points. So, the function is not one-to-one -one function. Therefore, the function has no inverse. For part B, we want to restate the domain so that the function become one-to-one -one function. So we can take half of the graph, whether on the right side or the left side. Okay, for the right side, it will be 3 to infinity. And for the left side, the domain will be negative infinity to 3. So when we restate the domain, 
it will be one to one function. For part C, hence find F inverse for X greater than equals to 3. It means that we want to take the domain from 3 to infinity. First, before we find the F inverse, we use the definition for absolute value function. We can separate into 2, 2 plus x minus 3 for x greater than equals to 3 and 2 minus x minus 3 for x less than 3. Simplify. So we will get x minus 1 for x greater than equals to 3 and 5 minus x for x less than 3. For this question, we only want to use this function for x greater than 3. Okay, now let's proceed to find the f inverse. f composite f inverse equals to x. Okay, take x minus 1. So f inverse x minus 1 is equals to x f inverse x will be equals to x plus 1. For part D, we want to sketch the graph of fx and f inverse in the same axis. For graph fx, we already sketch it in part A. But remember, only take half of the graph that is for x greater than equals to 3. Draw the line for y equals to x. So the point 3, 2 will be point 2, 3. Draw the line. So this is the graph for f inverse x. And don't forget to label your graph. And for part E, we want to state the domain and range for fx and f inverse x. For domain f equals to range of f inverse, the domain is actually given in part C for x greater than equals to 3. So we can write it as 3 to infinity, close bracket at 3. For range of f equals to domain of f inverse, the value is start from 2 to infinity. We can refer to the graph. For the fx, the range is start from okay, 2 to infinity. Okay, the red one for fx.